Hello everybody, Sanyer, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's video, I want to talk about the CRISPR technology, a decade of genome editing, the past, the future, where we are today. And of course, this diagram that we're looking at here, I actually covered it uh, over a year ago, actually. This paper was published around early January of 2023. Of course, now we are at the end of January 2024. I remember when the pub paper was published, I actually Rec uh, reviewed this research paper at the time and they made predictions at the time saying you know sickle cell disease was going to be the therapy for sickle cell disease from crystal therapeutics and vertex can cost about two million uh and they were not that far from it right it, they, the price is about 2.2 .2 million so if you actually adjust for inflation and so on you're not that far from that prediction right and and of course the paper wasn't just talking about that prediction the the bigger picture of that paper was talking about the applications of CRISPR. And because they were right of several things, I said, you know what, let me go back to this paper in this diagram and let's take a look at it. And I think it ties really well with the interview I gave on Amit Investing Channel a couple of weekends ago. And Amit Investing was like, okay, so human therapeutics is one thing. What about the vegetation side, climate change and so on? And it got me thinking, you know, let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about the future applications. So what we're seeing here in this diagram is, of course, you know, you got all the, you know, the, the future directions of CRISPR where we, you know, in the near direction where we are, maybe in the near future. And of course, then we are talking about the distant future, right? So the near future, for example, FDA approved sickle cell disease treatment, as you can see here, this was done, right? So, you know, this is achieved. Approval of more crops, edited crops for sale. This is actually being done right now uh, in the past year. In fact, when the paper was published, this was already going, so it's nothing crazy. Improving in vivo delivery, We've achieved that. I think people can agree with that with the Antilia data for Antilia 2002. Increased number of CRISPR-based treatments moving along to later stage of clinical trials. I think we've also achieved that. Uh, you can actually review certain client clinical trials going on and being just those their first patient end of 2023. We're about to get data this year. So I think that was achieved. Engineer of multigenic traits of more plants and animals. I think you can make the argument. I haven't seen a lot of it in 2023 since this paper was published, but I think you can make some argument on that. Increased nutritional value of more foods. We know this is happening right now. Uh, we, it's been happening for a couple of years yet. So approval of more clinical trial. I mean, it was only one clinical trial that was approved. So let's put that, uh, you know, for 20, eh, you know, maybe this is more for 2026 play, if anything. Introduce disease resistant and improve yields in other crops. This has been happening, as I said. And then you see the more distant future, right? The outer circle, right? And you look at here, harvest of pig organs of transplant patients. We actually saw that in 2022, January, before this paper was even published. Unfortunately, uh, the patients actually died for later complication, but at least you saw an initial trial of that playing out. And I think that's going to happen in the next few years for people that need heart transplants and maybe, you know, um, you know, you look at maybe, you know, livers and so on, uh, different organs. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be the pigs exactly, but I think you can see that playing out. Widely accessible treatment for disease. I think that goes uh, with the approvals of other clinical trials. Uh, we look at maybe another one, increased number of CRISPR-based treatment moving along in later stages. Oh, well, that, that was in... I covered that, that was more in the next two years. Genome editing has prophylactic against neurodegenerative or cardiovascular diseases. That's more, you know, the heart disease that CRISPR therapeutics is working on and or verve therapeutics. And of course, other companies are gonna be entering this space. Widespread of use of many ed CRISPR edited disease resistant, yes. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is, this is, this is really, really, uh, what they predicted here, and we sort of covered what we were sort of right for the near future anyways. Of course, here, next 10 years, this is another gram, a diagram saying a different, different ways. I think, I think this, there, there's something to be said here about CRISPR. I think there's something about that interview a couple of weekends ago I gave, it sort of made me realize that maybe the vegetation slash climate change is a lot of bigger deal than what people are making it out to be. I think the only reason why it hasn't really ventured is because companies have to focus somehow in something, right? You can't just be focusing on human therapeutics and start focusing on climate change and do everything, right? Uh, ultimately, you have to focus on one specific disease 
whether you're going for vegetation or for humans. If you are going for humans, you gotta get that approved. We already talked about it. The FDA approval takes about 10 years for a new technology. That's, we're past that. For future clinical trials for CRISPR-based therapies, maybe less than 10 years, but it's not gonna be like two years, right? Maybe five years, maybe four years, maybe six years. Uh, still many years, right? And these companies have to dish out multiple of these therapies, not just one via one hit wonder. Um, they have to dish out multiple, right? This is the big pharma play for any medicine in the past, right? You look at Vertex, you look at you know, Pfizer, all these companies, these big pharma companies, they never had just one program and they just double down on it for like decades. Don't get me wrong, they make a lot of money with one program maybe over the others, but they're still firing from all cylinders, right? And you look at this prediction, for example, whether or not these other companies are gonna be, you know, getting their clinical trials approved. I mean, getting one clinical trial approved is literally the decade challenge, um, but getting another one is never been done in the CRISPR landscape, right? So you look at CRISPR Diabetes trying to get their other programs and it's gonna be a challenge, right? The only company that I see that can get multiple CRISPR program approved within the next few years is actually Antilia, Antilia, because you look at CRISPR Therapeutics, their next program in line is CAR T-cell, and the CAR T-cell, it's a tough business, guys. It is not an easy business to, to crack into it. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a very lucrative one, uh, and it's a very needed one. I mean, you look at people with cancers, um, if you can crack the CAR T-cell pro problem, then you can potentially solve many, many forms of cancers, which is extremely lucrative and extremely novel as a mission statement there. But ultimately, you look at CRISP and TLA, for example, they have two specific rare d diseases that governments are l craving, craving to have a cure for it, right? You look at HAE, for example, from NTLA, one of their two programs there, uh, their amazing data. There's something to be said there, right? There's something to be said. And, you know, you look at the other disease, ATTR, I think there's something to be said, guys. There's something to be said there about multiple clinical trials program um, approved. I think, you know, for CRISPR, climate change, vegetation is an extremely important uh, venture. I think there are going to be other companies going public to tackle those programs. I think when it comes to humans, I think with the companies right now we have, I think they'll double down on human therapeutics for quite a while. I would love to see companies like Caribou that actually do hold the patent in the vegetation side of things, expand on that. I've said that many times in this channel, but I think at this point, you know, I think they're just doubling down on their CBO 10 program, for example. It's very hard to be tackling these different, because it's like different regulations, the whole different talent pool involved. Uh, although you're still using the CRISPR technology, it's two different worlds, right? Um, it's like a hammer, right? If you have a hammer, but you're working in construction, like building, I don't know, like wood, wood stuff, and then you use the same hammer, but now you're, uh, I don't know, fixing cars. It's two different ball games, right? You're still the same tool, same to still, still the same CRISPR tool, still the same hammer, but it's two different verticals, right? You can't mix and match, right? It's extremely tough to mix and match. And, uh, I wanted to get that out there for this video anyways. And again, review this paper here, what they got sort of right for 2023 and now we, where we are. Uh, I think these predictions are viable. I think they're not that bullish. They're not, of course, bearish. I think they're quite uh, in the middle there and quite sound to be said, uh, to be honest. So let me know, guys, what do you guys think about uh, the CRISPR, the technology, the next 10 years? Do you guys think that's happening? Do you guys think we're going to get these companies venture in the climate change vegetation side of things? Do you think we'll get multiple clinical trials approved in the few years? I think, you know, these companies, they highlighted that in 2026, they might be submitting for FDA approval, whether that's NTLA or, you know, Beam Therapeutics working for 2027, maybe. Um, we'll see where we go with that, you know, we'll see where we go. They got a lot, a lot of things happening in this space, guys. It's boiling, there's lots of energy. I love it, guys. As always, subscribe if you're not. Like this video, guys. Do smash the like button. It really, really does help the channel to get it out there. Thank you so much for watching. It is a Saturday. I'll see you guys in the next video, hopefully on Sunday. Thank you so much, and I'll see you.